The audience. Hey guys, welcome back again. So today I'm joined by his wife, Chris. So today we're going to be diving into Mike Tyson's epic punch that shocked the whole world. This fight is scary to watch. Uh -huh. Really. I felt goosebumps. Yeah. Really. <laughs> so please stick around and as we explore this, please make sure you cover Desta's eyes. It's quite scary. Nice. <laughs> so let's go, guys. Opening the 90s with great force, Mike Tyson and Donovan Ruddock were not just the protagonists of a fight, but of a war that would unfold in two battles in the ring and a parallel one to determine who was the number one contender in the discipline. Highlighting the best and worst That's moments of each, now. our invitation is for you to stay until the end of the video and join us oh. on this journey filled with deadly left hooks, Ooh. controversial low blows, and deadly much excitement even after the bell signaling the end of the contest. The extensive battle between Mike Tyson and Donovan Ruddock would begin on March 18, 1991, with the Mirage Hotel and Casino Ring in Las Vegas as the battlefield. The fight would be supervised by the critical eyes of judges Jerry Roth, Chuck Jampa, and Dave Moretti, and controlled by the wisdom of referee Richard Steele. Tyson would enter the scene as the number one heavyweight contender in the World Boxing Council, World Boxing Association, and International Boxing Federation. There was great anticipation for the fight simply because Donovan Ruddock was the next in line. Ruddock's professional record at 27 years old was 25 victories, 18 by knockout, one defeat, and zero draws. Tyson, at only 24, had 39 victories, 35 by knockout, and one defeat. As the bell rang, the first round began, and Tyson leaped from his corner with the characteristic aggressive fighting style that made him nearly unstoppable at that time. With his body already absorbing powerful combinations of punches, Ruddock sought to land effective counterattacks without neglecting his guard to neutralize <laughs> Iron Mike's severe offensive. Throwing a big punch, he stumbled after the punch. Ruddock would go down early in the second round after receiving a powerful left hook that temporarily weakened his legs. Despite no. surpassing the safety count, he demonstrated that he had much more to offer before being declared defeated. And he didn't get to a warning, but that's the kind of stuff that's going to get cost him if the fight continues. Still will happen. Showing that the previous round was no fluke, Tyson would knock down Ruddock once again during the third round. After engaging in close combat with his rival for most of the episode, with less than 10 seconds remaining, another powerful left hook would send Ruddock to the canvas. <laughs> the audience couldn't believe what was happening, and it was evident on Ruddock's face that he, too, didn't fully comprehend the situation. Showing readiness to <laughs> was the count of it. <laughs> no, was not expecting it. You know the first knock, you know the first knockout? It was like, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was like, yeah. what the? Oh. What just happened? <laughs> it's still calculating how do I test for that? Fine. <laughs> Oh the God. bell allowed him to return to his corner and rethink his strategy before Tyson proved that the third time is the charm. Mm -hmm. Despite staying on his feet, the fourth and fifth rounds wouldn't necessarily be Ruddock's resurgence. Tyson, seemingly punishing him mercilessly like a medieval executioner, applied enough pressure for his opponent to break at any moment. He's got to get his fire going again. Steel, one, oh. Like his bigger, more hard Yeah! Okay. Oh, so D or is honest. His brain is good. <laughs> <It's so damaged. laughs> Despite actively seeking to inflict some damage with his counterattacks, Ruddock had trouble landing a significant blow on Iron Mike's body, who appeared to be very close to achieving his goal, victory. Tyson opened the sixth round by pushing Ruddock back against the ropes, a move that would be repeated more than once within the time limit marked by the bell. Throwing punches with decreasing certainty, Ruddock began to resemble a punching bag for a fighter who didn't <laughs> mind breaking his soul with punches, if necessary, to secure a knockout <laughs> victory. You guys are looking like a punching bag. Ending his ordeal in the seventh round, Tyson finally positioned Ruddock against but the ropes to deliver the most deadly like combination of yeah. punches he had received. That is actually for the strength of yeah. Mike Tyson's um, punch. He's actually absorbing it very well. Yeah. I actually have a question. 
this their gloves, right? Mm. I don't really think people are they feeling the impact of the body. You will. I feel like it's just foam. <laughs> no, it's not foam. You feel the impact, but not as like when it's your bare knuckles. Yeah, no, the bare knuckles. Oh! I think we have we uh, get them bleeding very yeah, fast. Yeah. Very fast because of the you know. Boom. Yeah, well, well, Perceived in his entire right, after professional this, we, we career. Test out after moving toward the punches. center of the ring, it seemed that Iron Mike's attacks had ceased until a second flurry of punches made Donovan Ruddock dance like a puppet colliding with the ropes. At which point, Richard Steele knew he had given his all and was not in a condition to continue. Down. Down, down, down! Yeah. Mike Tyson defeated <laughs> Donald stars. Ruddock by technical knockout at 2 minutes and 22 seconds of the seventh round. Far from being the end of the war, it would be only one of the two battles that both fighters would engage in to determine who was the ultimate champion. In parallel, while the fighters shared a friendly embrace, their corners decided to start their own battle, creating a true chaos what? in the boxing ring. Having to separate the contenders, fearing they might get involved in the riot, one of the most unsportsmanlike scenarios in the history of the sport unfolded. What? Far from accepting defeat by the great Mike Tyson, Ruddock would do everything possible to have a second chance, leading them back to where it all began, the ring at the Mirage Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas this on June 28, 1990. Come back again for Chuck Champa would also be reprising his role as a judge, joined by Dalby Shirley and Art Lurie. This time, it would be referee Mills Lane's task to ensure the fight took place as cleanly as possible. Adding a victory to the previously mentioned record, Tyson once again presented himself as the number one contender in the World Boxing Council, World Boxing Association, and International Boxing Federation. Ruddock, who would add a loss to his record, remained the next in line. However, he maintained hope that this time he would succeed in overcoming Iron Mike. After the bell rang, the first round of one of the most anticipated rematches for the general public began. From the very beginning, Tyson adopted his explosive fighting style, making it clear to Ruddock that he had to approach him with a different offensive if he didn't want to achieve the same result. As if it were deja vu, Ruddock would go down in the second round after receiving a powerful right hook. Getting up immediately, he only allowed Iron Mike, who seemed yeah. out of control, yeah. to continue punishing him with like, that. That's more angry now. Combat! That should be a meme. <laughs> you look like I'm begging for help. Hmm. That's just punishing him this round. Like, before it was a fight, but now it's just now. Mm. I, you know, but the way the, the last fight once ended again during the fourth round, that, uh, it was a bold yeah, left made fall, made yeah. fall backward, rising at the count of eight to demonstrate his ability to continue the fight. <laughs> from this point on, the fight stabilized, with occasional attacks from Ruddock trying to cause enough damage knocked, to slow down yeah, the from his mouth. Is, the cruel um, offensive the, Tyson maintained in each okay, completed round. Again. Closing the eighth episode, Mills Lane yeah, got the point from notice, Ruddock yeah. after oh, knowingly he hit notice, Tyson so. after the bell rang. His chances of winning the fight were becoming slim, and his decision to disrespect the time limits only demonstrated the helplessness he felt in being dominated a second time by the Iron Mike Beast. Tyson, not being the cleanest fighter in the contest, also suffered a point deduction imposed by Lane after, during the ninth and 10th rounds, he allowed controversial low blows to land on his opponent. With both pugilists giving their best, this time, the level of forces remained sufficiently balanced to allow them to reach the end of the originally agreed upon 12 rounds. After the bell signaling the end of the contest, the decision of who would be awarded the victory would depend on each judge's perspective regarding who set the pace of the fight and who submitted to it. When the announcer took center ring, the moods were truly heated. Leaving just enough intrigue to generate more excitement, he soon announced that the result was a unanimous decision in favor of Mike Tyson.
<laughs> like two gentlemen, both fighters yeah. shook hands, shared a hug, and exchanged a few words, putting an end to a rivalry that extended for months, even though Donovan Rudda couldn't remove the thorn of joining the few who defeated the great Iron Might. Two battles with similar outcomes but different endings, demonstrating the art of knowing how to lose beyond knowing how to win. Yeah. If you've made it this far, we can only thank you for joining us in reliving two of the most significant encounters in the journey of Mike Tyson and Donovan Ruddock in the discipline. If you enjoyed our story, remember that there's no better way to let us know than by leaving a like and sub subscribe. Yeah. So let's uh, love the originality yeah. to the channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's just speak right. I feel like that guy going back was was humiliating. Yeah, and it, yeah. And it says that you, you you got your ass kicked, and it was not like I think the fight was a tie yeah. or something. If it was actually a tie, then that's then you'd be like, okay, I need to go back, you know, and find. You were knocked down twice, like twice. It's a shame. Why can't you just take it gracefully and like and move on? <laughs> Even when you forget about it, yeah. You know, but it's, now you humiliated yourself twice. This video was done because it came twice. If you have just left the first time, this video won't have been made. <laughs> so since when everybody watches me, I remember his defeat. <laughs> so please, next time if they defeat you, go home, sleep, go home, cry, move on, and move on. Gets better though. It's not that easy. No, I think at that point it felt like there's something he did wrong that made um Tyson. No, like, he feel like, like he no, he feel like he knows his game plan. Yeah. Probably feel like he's used to his game but plan. But if you watch the second match, he was actually trying to protect himself from a left hook from Mike Tyson. Yeah. I don't know if, if you notice, he was more like cautious, yeah. cautious of his left hook because Mike Tyson's left hook was a very, very dangerous. So he was like protecting himself from that um blow and jabs and everything. Well, <laughs> My test is a good fighter, so you know how to adapt. So if you are if you have like tuned into this game style, you just switch to another game style. So you protect this side, you switch to the right. Yeah. That's what makes him a good fighter. Yeah, ain't seen adapting in, in the fight, like okay, this person is like this, like you watch the person reading, I adapt to it and deliver. Move on. Yeah. So thank you guys for sticking around. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on this YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys on the next update. For now, remember blessed and Bye.